become so odious, makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to indicate to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. Welcome. Welcome again to the Daily Mayhem Report. I'm the master of many things, and today is March 13th, 2012. We'll start off, as always, by going back into time, this time all the w way to the year 1781. English astronomer William Herschel observed this day the seventh planet from the sun, Uranus, first described by him as a curious either nebulous star or perhaps a comet, and named for the father of the god Saturn. Now, back to today, status of the economy. Markets look strong. The Dow was up uh, close to 218 points. NASDAQ rose just over 56. S&P had a gain of almost 25. And 10-year bonds also saw a slight gain. Other stuff going on uh, in the economy. U.S. retail rose 1.1% in February. That, according to Newser.com, and Fitch uh, has uh, increased the uh, Greece rating up to B minus from restricted default in the wake of bond swaps. That again from Newser. And this, according to Yahoo News, 15 banks passed the stress test, City and three more fail. All but the 419 U.S. major banks got a green light Tuesday from the Federal Reserve to boost their dividends and take other steps that will make their stocks more attractive to investors. The Fed declared them strong enough to survive a downturn worse than the Great Recession. The Fed's findings signaled its confidence that the financial system, which nearly collapsed three and a half years ago, is healthy again. J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, and other large bank holding companies that passed the Fed's so-called stress test, raised their dividends and announced plans to buy more of their stock. The news ignited a late-day rally on Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average shot up 218 points to its highest close since the end of 2011. Now, moving along, a little bit of news about the corporate machine. This time we're talking about the global corporate machine. U.S., EU, and Japan challenge China's rare earth export restrictions. In a trip bar tight uh, challenge against China's export restrictions on rare earth minerals, the U.S., European Union, and Japan filed a complaint with the World Trade Organization, this thanks to the Christian Science Monitor. The three trade powers aim to increase the pressure on Beijing's export quotas of raw materials, asking the World Trade Organization for dispute settlement consultations, which is the first step in a longer process. The United States and the EU and Japan argue that by setting export restrictions on uh, such as quotas and taxes, China artificially lowers domestic prices and boosts domestic supply, thus granting local manufacturers an advantage against foreign competition. As a result, Chinese companies have access to more and cheaper rare earth minerals, and foreign firms have to grapple with smaller and more expensive supplies. China's restriction on rare earths and other products violate international trade rules and must be removed, said the EU Trade Commissioner Carol de Guchin in an EU statement. So, controlling the entire planet, that's what that boils down to. Now, moving along to the folder that I like the most, Obama bullshit. This from PressTV.ir. The UK and the US in a special relationship stunt British Prime Minister David Cameron and the United States President Barack Obama say their countries have a special relationship amid overwhelming evidence that their announcements are nothing more than a public stunt. Cameron and Obama used the, an article for the Tuesday edition of the Washington Post to taught their historical links and common values as reason enough for such a relationship. The alliance between the United States and Great Britain is a partnership of heart, bound by the history, traditions, and values we share, the article read. What makes our relationship special, a unique and essential asset for 
our nations in the world is that we join hands across so many endeavors. Put simply, we count on each other and the world counts on our alliance, it added. Obama backstabbed Britain when he described France as Washington's strongest ally and friend in a White House press conference with French President Nicolas Sarkozy in January of 2011. We don't have a stronger friend and a stronger ally than Nicolas Sarkozy and the French people, Obama said, after he drew strong criticism both in the U.S. and in Britain for damaging remarks about London-Washington ties. He pretended to be repairing everything during his May visit to France. France is our oldest ally and continues to be one of our closest allies. And as President Sarkozy indicated, we had had an enormous convergence of approaches and views on the challenges that we face around the world, he told another news conference with Sarkozy in time, uh, this time in Duval, France. However, his track record over the past year, not least his insulting behavior towards Britain, showed his emptiness of his mending comments. Obama closed 2011 with humiliation of London when he talked of storming the English embassy rather than the British embassy in Tehran, November 29th. The gaffe was taken as a suggestion of the idea of Great Britain is a laughing matter for Washington that probably considers its closest ally the little England. Now, moving along, modern day martial law. They're going to start with your driver's license. This according to YakimaHerald.com. Your next driver's license may use facial recognition, a bill that would allow the state to use facial recognition technology on driver's licenses to prevent identity theft is expected to soon be signed into law to the dismay of central Washington lawmakers. All nine legislators from the 13th, 14th, and 15th district, all Republicans, voted no on Senate Bill 6150. Those spoke to the Yakima Herald Republic said their primary concern wasn't the technology, which some opponents say violates privacy rights, but the bill's fee increase for the numerous Department of Licensing Services. And more news about modern day martial law. Biometrics is coming. This according to Homeland Security Newswire, Saratoga hospitals deploy biometrics to increase security and improve efficiency. To improve privacy and security measures, Saratoga Hospital in New York recently announced that it would be partnering, partnering with Digital Persona Incorporated to install biometric access controls to verify medical personnel's identities and increase efficiency. Of course, we all know that's just softening the sheep for when they want to uh, implant us with biometric chips and other vile things. Now, moving along, news about our contorting earth. First up, New South Wales. Thanks to the extinction protocol, New South Wales snowy mountains rattled by tremor. People in New South Wales snowy mountains are reporting uh, what they say as an earth tremor. Residents at Jindab Neen say the earth was shaking around Calcite area on the shores of Lake Jindabin early this morning. Jim Carker from the uh, township says the tremor took him by surprise. He says the earth movements are not uncommon when the lake is full. Uh, about 5.20 a.m., I was laying in bed, contemplating getting out, and all of a sudden there was an almighty bang, and then it rumbled away up towards the Calcite area, Mr. Crocker said. We've had these experiences, these tremors in the past years, and they normally occur around when we have full lake levels. More news about the contorting earth. Indonesia back up again. This time, EGEN Volcano is placed on high alert after a rise in activity, again from the extinction protocol. So that has been raised to an alert level three, getting more active, ready to spew out all over the place. And also Japan in the headlines. Japan's Sakurajima experiences the most violent eruption in three years. Sakurajima uh, continued its second day of violent eruptions on Tuesday, spewing hot rocks and ash, but there was no major damage in the vicinity. The Japanese Meteorological Agency reported. The agency said Monday's powerful eruption was the most forceful since 2009. The volcano was lo located in the southern prefecture of Kogoshima. The Meteorological Agency added that the volcano has been erupting steadily for the last two years. Now, moving along, weather, wicked, and wild. This, again, thanks to extinction protocol, northeast and midwest U.S. flirt with high record temperatures. Temperatures soared to record highs in the northeast on Monday after a weekend of record-setting warmth across the Upper Plains 
in the forecast for an unprecedented extended warmth for this week. The National Weather Service uh, reported this. In Boston, temperatures reached a record 71 degrees on Monday, eclipsing the former high of 69 degrees for this date set 110 years ago. The Weather Service uh, said the unseasonably warm weather was expected to continue in Boston through the week, but likely not with record-setting temperatures. Uh, let's see here, moving along. More wicked and wild weather. Climate-related disasters displaced 42 million in Asia over two years. Climate-related disasters have displaced more than 42 million people in Asia over the past two years, the Asian Development Bank said Tuesday in a report calling for swift action to avert future crisis. Asia and the Pacific is the global area most prone to national disasters, both in terms of the absolute number of disasters and of populations affected, said the report launched in Bangkok which was itself affected by flooding last year. About 31.8 million people in the region were displaced by climate-related disasters and extreme weather in 2010, a particularly bad year, including more than 10 million people in Pakistan owing to massive flooding. A further 10.7 million were forced to flee their homes last year, it said, warning that such events will become more frequent with climate change. While many of those displaced return to their home as conditions improve, others were less fortunate, struggling to build new lives elsewhere after incurring a uh, substantial personal loss. Good Lord, wickedness all over the place. Next up, viruses, plagues, famine, and disease. This from the Extinction Protocol outbreak of Newcastle disease reported in South Africa. An outbreak of Newcastle disease has killed more than 170 chickens in the Northwest. The Provincial Department of Agriculture and Rural Development said on Friday, the outbreak in the greater Tong local municipality, Dr. Ruth Segamatsi, uh, Monpati district, has so far caused the death of about 140 chickens belonging to five farmers. Additional cases were reported in Lashobo Valley, where more than 25 chickens were reported dead within a week. According to IOL News, Agriculture MEC Utamalo Shishwan has expressed his concern to the department's state veterinarians and urged farmers to report any mortality cases immediately. There is no need, however, for other poultry farmers in the province to panic since measures have been taken to control the spread of the outbreak. Next up, humans losing their mind. This is ridiculous. This is on the political level, thanks to sending Starseed a WordPress blog, but Ohio bill will require men to submit an affidavit from sex partner confirming impotence before receiving Viagra. And Ohio State Senator is turning the tables on men seeking to regulate women's access to reproductive health. Senator Nina Turner has introduced legislation regulating men's access to erectile dysfunction, dysfunction drugs. The Daily, uh, Dayton Daily News has the details. Before getting a prescription drug for Viagra or other erectile dysfunction drugs, men would have to see a sex therapist, receive a cardiac stress test, and get a notarized affidavit signed by a sexual partner affirming impotency. Now, good Lord, don't we have better things to do with our time than enact foolish bills related to sex drugs? disgusting and vile. They're losing their minds. And this out of the BBC. Gunmen killed 19 on Ethiopian bus in the Gambella region. One report said the attackers kidnapped five female passengers during their assault on the bus uh, 12 miles from the town of Gambella. Some of the other passengers were injured. injured. Officials did not speculate as to the reason for the attack. Gambella province has a history of conflicts between communities. State-owned Ethiopian Ethiopia TV said the attack happened early Monday. The report said that 34 passengers were on board at the time. So again, humans losing their mind. And this up from Scott.net, exploitation of poor by human organ traffickers. A Michigan State University anthropologist who spent more than a year infiltrating the black market for human kidneys has published the first in-depth study describing the often horrific experiences of poor people who were victims of organ trafficking. 
Monir, Monir Azimen interviewed 33 kidney sellers in his native Bangladesh and found they typically did not get the money they were promised and were plagued with serious health problems that prevented them from working, shame, and depression. The study, which appears in the Medical Anthropology Quarterly, uh, the doctor's uh, decade-long research in the field describe a growing worldwide market for body parts that includes kidneys, parts of liver, and even corneas. What are people thinking? They are losing their minds. And a little bit of pot news is coming out of normal.org in relation to my home state of New Hampshire. Marijuana law reform measures moving forward in New Hampshire. Uh, on Thursday, March 8, members of the Senate Committee on Health heard testimony in favor of Senate Bill 409, which allows for the limited legalization of medical marijuana by qualified patients. Member of the committee heard stirring testimony from patients and uh, appeared skeptical toward law enforcement opposition to the bill, which would authorize patients to possess up to 18 marijuana plants and or six ounces of marijuana for therapeutic purposes. The committee has not yet made recommendations regarding the measure. Uh, in a separate legislative action on Friday, March 9th, men members of the State of the House of Representatives narrowly passed HB 1526 to decriminalize minor marijuana offenses. This proposal reduces the penalties on minor marijuana possession offenses up to one half ounce from a criminal misdemeanor punishable by up to a year in jail and a $2,000 fine to a nominal monetary penalty of a $250 fine. Also, predictably, the House rejected a third bill, HB 1705, which sought to legalize and tax commercial marijuana production and sale. House Bill 1526 is now before the Senate Judiciary Committee, and uh, you can get more information or reach out to your senators in that area via normal.org. And then last but not least, the ever lulzical hacker news. The hackers have taken it easy today, but... The HackerNews.com is reporting that pop star Keisha Twitter has been hacked. Uh, Keisha has fallen victim to internet pranksters after a Twitter.com blog was hacked on Sunday. Tweet by her account, account single out in a couple hours. Uh, it was potentially seen by Keisha's 3.1 million followers, even more, given that Twitter is mainly public social network. The singer later spotted a fake message and quickly deleted it after realizing her account had been comp compromised. Well, that is the news. That is the mayhem. We'll be back with you again tomorrow night to keep you horrified, informed, and hope like hell we wake you up.